but I, I did not see that. So I did four claims all in one day, sent them in, and basically in less than 48 hours, my PayPal had the, the money back. Well, it's time to go over to October 2023 eBay Standard Envelope Analysis for the month of October. What I do is I take 100 random mailings that I did in October and I bump them up against the chart as you'll see here and we'll go through the details. But before I get into it, I want to go over an update that came out for November 1st, 2023 for eBay Standard Envelope from eBay. And this is it right here and I'll go ahead and read it to you eBay Standard Envelope is eBay's labels, eBay labels low-cost shipping service for small, lightweight items, and we are excited to announce you can now ship more items with this service. Beginning November 1st, 2023, in addition to trading cards, coins, and currency, stamps, and postcards, the following items are eligible. Patches, you know, like patches you put on your uniform or whatever, stickers and decals, greeting cards, seeds eBay Standard Envelope includes integrated limited tracking and shipping protection for items weighing up to 3 ounces and a quarter inch thick. Each shipping shipment includes a $20 of shipment protection on single item orders and $50 on combined orders, all for about a dollar in shipping costs. So that came out through eBay. Now what I'm seeing here, I, I'd love to see photos, but I think they're, they know that seeds come in a certain pack size Greeting cards have standard sizes. Stickers and decals are pretty standard and patches. So I think they're going after the market and the items that are standard, have a pretty standard size where photos could be a lot of different sizes. So I think they're getting better with it. At least it's going in a direction where they're adding and they're not taking away. So if you're selling any of this stuff, you can now use eBay standard envelope with it. Now during the month of October, eBay was under 90% in two of the four scan areas that I check. And I had seven no scans again. The no scans are becoming pretty regular every month, more than they have in the first part of the year. And I know they had some issues with the post office and eBay integration. I think at the end of October, it didn't really affect this. It just affected printing labels and stuff. But if you click on it a few times, it came back up for me but some people were having some issues and they had a little banner across there. So if they're having a problem with integration and even do a label, you think there's a problem with the data going back and forth between eBay and the post office. I had zero refunds in October. Now, one viewer commented that he was, uh, eBay's clamping down on giving out claims. They're getting more stricter and stuff. I haven't seen that, but I don't put a lot of claims in this year. So I told them I have four I've been procrastinating on. I know I had 90 days, so every time I have it on my list to do, I, I didn't do it. So I ended up with four I needed to put in at different times coming, they're going to expire. So I went ahead one day and I spent 20 minutes and I put four claims in. I got my money back in less than 48 hours. No questions asked or anything. So it's the same as it was for me. Has anybody had any issues with getting claims refused if they submitted any? Let, let us know in the comments, but I, I did not see that. So I did four claims all in one day, sent them in, and basically in less than 48 hours, my PayPal had the, the money back. Now, I've, I've only had six refunds for the whole year, or return, you know, returns refunds. Two of those are my fault because I sent one card to the wrong person. Then, you know, you always have its partner, went to the other one, so there's two. So really just four got lost. I think they ended up showing up. But eBay was able to, re I refund the buyer and I got my money back. So I'm whole, except for the two I screwed up. It happens to all of us. When scans don't occur, it causes us more work. And I did a video about where's my postcard. And in that video is a little cut and paste thing I have made up, a paragraph. When someone says, hey, it shows delivered, I can't find it. It's because they never used eBay standard envelope before and they just need to wait a couple more days because when it shows delivered, it's at the sorting center or on the way. It still takes a couple days to get there. So I have that little uh, blurb I cut and paste into there. And I and you'll see I track requests now as of this one. I, I said, I need to know how many people are actually asking me. So I keep track of it. I had four requests this month, which was a, 
probably three more than I usually do. I hardly have any anymore. But four people said it was delivered and they couldn't find a card. And I had to send it out. And I never heard from them again. But it does cause us more work because if people don't understand how it works, we have to go back and forth with them and send messages and stuff. So when these scans don't happen, it causes more work. And I feel 90% Below that line is where it causes more work. It's just a line I drew in the sand. All the scans should be 100%. These are machines. There, there should be no reason why it does not work there. That should be the expectation. But 90% is where it starts causing us a little more work. Now we're going to walk through the details of the graph here in a minute, like I usually do. But I wanted to, I always show this little slide for the new people that haven't seen this. I've done this for about two years since it came out. I have a little thing I put together and it does have Etsy in it when I sold on Etsy, but Etsy has letter tracking as well. I think Macari uses a flavor of this. E this was done by letter track for years and eBay just took it and did their own thing with it and called it eBay standard envelope. It's part of the post office service. It's nothing eBay really came up with. It's just they integrated it, pieces of it to their system like Macari and Etsy has done and stuff and letter track. It's a little barcode and it's basically used for marketing in the world where if you, a company does bulk mailing of marketing material, they can see how many things, you know, reports and stuff from that. And so they've integrated it into tracking for letters and stuff. It's not as robust as package tracking. It's, they, the carrier is not gonna scan this when you put it in your mailbox. If you take it to the post office, they're not gonna be able to scan it either. Their wands, their scanners do not work on these barcodes, only the sorting centers, high-speed machines can read these. And they're not going to scan it when they put it in your mailbox. It's going to be scanned at the last sorting center before it's delivered. But it's not robust, and we're not paying a lot like we do with package tracking. You're paying, what, 63 cents? Something like that for, I can't remember. Uh, 63, I do it all the time, but I still can't remember. So 63 cents, you're not going to get a full robust thing and they're not going to have, for every letter in a mailbox, they're not going to pay a carrier to scan each letter. If it was, we'd be paying ground advantage prices for it. So it's just a little bit better than we had years ago with just a stamp and a label and no recourse. Now we have a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and show this clip to you. It takes a few minutes and uh, here we go. Here is a, a slide I'm going to bring up on the big screen. This is just a the process in my head on there not real detailed layman terms I, I don't know how everything works with this I can speculate from my uh, IT background my technical background but there are so many different ways to do it but in a nutshell this should explain to anybody how it works so the first box there is you got eBay and Etsy platform they're connected across multiple data centers and so like that. They're not in the same one. That's why it's got the dotted line there. They're two separate companies, two separate platforms, uh, two separate you know programs, applications, and stuff like that. They're not shared. But I just put them in a box to make it easier. When someone buys a postcard from either eBay or Etsy, it goes to the post office. The post office then sends data to eBay or Etsy in some way, format a file, web services, some integration is going to go up and going to come down. Either eBay and Etsy picks it up or directly goes in the, into those platforms if they have shared access. So that's your scans. When it hits the post office, it goes back and forth into the tracking on eBay and Etsy. If everything is successful, with the delivery, and then you got a happy customer like at the end here. Even though the scans are not happening, most of the time the customer gets the card and they're happy. Now, so that's how it works. Very simple. There's probably a lot more to it, but I just kind of dumbed it down for me. And as you notice, there's data coming from the post office to eBay, eBay to the post office. Either the post office is sending eBay and eBay is not showing it to us, or the post office is not scanning it, we'll never know. So there's a breakdown somewhere in that process. I could point my finger some months a little bit more to eBay and some months a little bit more to post office, but I, I really think there's more on the eBay side. If I had to point a finger, if they tied me down, it's on the eBay application side. I think the data is getting there. I think they're just not manipulating it and working through it and getting it onto the website for us to see. 
I think that's where a lot of the problems are. Uh, hopefully it gets better. I can't see where all these different machines, scanning machines, are not scanning these these mailers. They've been doing this for years, scanning letters and mailing these machines. I think they have done a very good job with that over the years of getting these letters to these systems and stuff. And I, I really don't think it's the scanning there. I think it's more on it. The data is going to eBay and they need to go through the data and get it populated onto the website so we can see it and it's not happening right now. Now, tomorrow it could change, but I hate pointing fingers, but if I had to, that's where it is. Now, I track 100 random mailings in October. I do it every month. I just go through my paid and ship and I pick out 100 random, just wherever. I don't, I just pick and choose. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I just want to do it random. So if I ship out 500 postcards that month, I go through and I all over the dates, beginning of the month, middle of the month, whatever, and get those. And here's the chart. I keep this chart here. It's a little table in Excel. It's not hard for me to do. It takes a little bit of time, but not long because I keep it up. But on this chart here, there's all these different columns. Now the first one is the state. I like to track the state, the last point on the tracking or where it's shipped to just to see if there's an issue. I'm in Illinois so to ship to the East Coast or the West Coast is not as bad if I was in New Jersey and had to ship to California. So I'm kind of not in the middle of the United States but I'm Midwest. So it tells me where this thing is. I've noticed over tracking all this stuff I have more problems when it goes to the East Coast than it does to the West Coast. West Coast takes longer but the East Coast seems to have more issues and Anything else in between, it's just okay. And the south isn't bad either, but the west is seem to, most of my issues is going through the east coast, like Philadelphia and New York, those big post offices take, they, they seem to lose things, then they show up. So that's what the chart is saying. Now across the top, you got state, then you got label, that's the created, 100 labels, I have full control, I always gonna be 100%. Then you got the origin, that's in the route of your eBay standard envelope, postcard in the envelope, it's going to hit your first sorting center. Mine's in Champaign, Illinois, which is two, two hours, about two hours south of me is where it goes. So it gets picked up and it's driven down there. And then you have your destination scan. That's where it's moving through the system and it'll say destination in there. And that's what I look for in the tracking if there's a destination scan. So it tells the customer and you if you want to look at it. I don't look at tracking unless someone says anything. Is the destination. It lets them know that it's moving. If it stops, sometimes you get messages. Out for delivery. I just put delivery here to, for the chart. But out for delivery is an important thing too. So people know it's, it's out for delivery. And then all important delivered. That's the delivered scan. And that's the one that causes people most headache. It'll say delivered, but it's not here. They go to their neighbors. They yell at the wife and kids. Where'd you put the mail? And then they send you a message. And then you send them back and they call it stupid. They haven't seen an eBay driver here. Nobody from eBay has delivered anything. So they really don't understand how it works. But over the years they've done this, those requests have really went down because people that buy postcards, trade cards and stuff like that understand now that it says delivered but it's going to take a little bit. So it takes that. So you're educating that one person if they remember the next time. And then average days, it takes from one point to another. What I do is I take the first, the date I did the label, the first origin scan, the day I did the label, all the way to when it says delivered, and I add a day. You can add whatever days you want. I just figure I just, down the board, I just add a day. Because it hits the sorting center in one day. It's probably more than that, but I've just been doing one day. And that's what that is. So let's walk through each of these scans. Create is 100%. It's down at the bottom there where the arrow is. Now with the origin scan, I my origin center sucks. It's basically a technical term of it just doesn't work sometimes in scans. But is it the post office or is the data getting the eBay and they're not showing it? I, I don't know, but it's pretty prevalent every month that I'm, I'm missing origin scans. 82. They missed 18, 82%. They missed 18 origin scans. And then you move over to destination scans. Remember, this is 100 random mailings and I'm looking at the tracking. They missed 13, 87%. So those two areas, the first two, they're under 90%. And then you move over to alpha delivery. 
They only missed eight. But they missed all those other ones in the beginning. So I don't, there's no rhyme or reason. Same barcode, same envelope, same type of sorting machines probably. 92%. So it's above 90. And then you're all important delivered, the best one of the month, 93%. They missed seven. So at least they're getting at the end there, but what's going on in the beginning? So there are still, still some issues they need to work out with that. This needs to be at 100%. I'll never say it shouldn't because that's the expectation is 100%. Yeah, you're going to have breakdowns or different things like that. But if you shoot for 80, you're going to do 70. So shoot for 100 and you'll get where you need to be. And then the average day for post office is still 5. No scans. I had 7. Didn't get any scans at all. Not even an origin scan. Nothing. Zero. The only thing it is, it said I created a label. That's been pretty regular in the last few months. That's more than I've seen at the beginning of the year. Then request, I've had, uh, I had three people ask, where's my postcard? It shows delivered. And I had to send that little thing out. So I'm tracking that now. Just see how many times I have to do that. And then claims sent in, I sent four in, and I got four claims approved. Less 48 hours and the money in my account. Now here's the, the chart I track for the year. I put the numbers from this chart over into another chart, a line chart, and you can see here how the dotted line is the 90% level where I think it causes us more work. And you can see that the blue and the orange, which is the origin and destination, have been running under 90% since like June. It started dropping in May and it's been steadily trending under 90%. They need to look at that. And then your other ones have been trending to stay above that, above 90. It should be at 100%, but they're above 90. So it's the origin and destination scans. And here's the chart for the post office. As you notice, they had a little blip in March. They went up to six days average, but they've been holding steady five days. To the time the label created, to the time it says delivered plus one day. It's been five days. Not bad. Now, that's an average. Some take to Texas. I've had some seven, Oregon, some out East Coast, eight days. Even in Illinois here, going to Chicago, I had one take like uh, seven, eight days. It goes down south two hours, comes back three hours, and gets delivered. So something's messed up somewhere. But that's the tracking. Now, when you send something out with eBay, standard envelope, you get insurance, and I did a video where it's called Get Your Money Back. There's a little claim you gotta do. You can't put it in before 30 days, and you have to put it in be before 90 days. I tried to put one in, and when I did the claims before, I would take a ESU number, the little tracking number that eBay has, it's called ESU if you look in the tracking. I put that in there over before 30 and over 90. It knows there's some kind of algorithm with that number and knows the claim is not going to let you do it. If, now, if you put a one that's between 30 and 90 days, it'll take it, that number. But if it's, so they're, they're reading that ESU number, then it has some kind of date code in it, some algorithm. But you can get your money back. eBay standard envelope is $20 per item or $50 for the total. So if you send out a $10 postcard in eBay standard envelope and it gets lost or damaged, you can put a claim in and get your money back. Just refund the customer and you get your money back. And I have never had a problem with it. And I refunds and returns and stuff like that is not really, it's a part of my business, but it's a very small part. I've only had six this year and two I did, so basically four. So I don't pay a lot of attention to returns and refunds. If someone doesn't get a card, stuff like that, it doesn't bother me. It's, it's just part of it when you resell it. You need to manage into your prices and your processes and your mind that if you send something out there is a chance it could happen and it'll happen on sometimes on the worst items that you want it to happen. But you can get your money back by looking at that video. And I actually walked through the claim form and how to fill it out and what to do and what I, I've worked with those people and my last ones were great. Now I'm going to continue to track this every month and I think I'm going to continue it for 2024 since we're below 90% on stuff. I was going to go to a quarterly, but I think for myself, I do it for myself and I thought I would share it with you guys. So 2023, I'm going to be able to do it and see the progress. Thanks for watching and remember, subscribe so you get notified when I put these out every month. And you can always skip through, I put little chapters at the bottom. so. You can just skip right to the details every month if you want. 
Thanks for watching. Here's some fish. Bye.